I made a lot of progress on my Faraday coil wire this morning. First thing I ended up doing was I completed the install of my three switches. These are now jog switches. This one here rotates this axis. Um, this is where your, your uh, bobbin is going to sit. And then these two move this axis back and forth, which is your uh, wire feeder. And I just hardwired those right into the back of the uh, controller board into the X, Y, and Z limit switch inputs. I'm not using them as limit switches. I'm using them as jog switches. So if you, they have this wired up right now. They actually operate as jog switches. This axis is particularly noisy because this rod makes a lot of noise when it's moving. As you can see, it's working pretty well. So I'll show you what I ended up doing on the uh, JavaScript side. <clears throat> I have C9 open over here. I uh, took my uh, my uh, template works my template workspace that I uh, cloned the other day, and uh, changed all the IDs recommended by John in his video. And then I came down and I found the init function for um, my workspace. And I put in uh, three lines of code right here. First thing I ended up doing was this one right here is um, I changed the uh, limit switch reporting. On the, I changed the status reporting so it reports out the limit switches. And then I added a stamp, uh, status handler to the, uh, I subscribed to the, um, the, chili, the chili pepper widget serial port. When the receive line message comes in, I subscribe to that and it calls my handler. And then I have a set interval function set up to send out the uh, status um, status request. It looks like uh, every 100 milliseconds. Right down here is my, my uh, status handler. What you're going to get back out is a line that kind of looks like this here. Um, and what I'm interested in right here is this limit switch setting over here. So the first thing I do is you you might get back a lot of different uh, messages on my status handler. So I look for a less than character um, to actually be to look for messages that, are, that I'm interested in. And then I put it in the uh, widget two instance. Remember the widget two instance is this area right here. And I'll go ahead and push some of the buttons down so you can see this is the message coming back. So this is the, uh, it comes back, I'm reading in the, uh, Z, the Z limit switch there. There's the Y, and there's the X. So that's all working pretty well. Now, I ended up having to fuss with the Gerbil code a little bit. <clears throat> I'm doing relative moves, and I... Um, have to look at the status of the switches so you, it only moves when it's um, when you're holding the button down actually it starts a move uh, in one direction when the button goes from a state of zero to a state of one and then it runs um, that's what this is doing right here and then <clears throat> It runs until you until the state of when it was a one and it goes back to zero. I end up um, uh, stopping the motion and then I do a soft reset on the gerbil board and then I end up uh, sending out a dollar sign X uh, command, which um, I don't remember what that does. It's a re it's some kind of enable. I, I don't remember what it is. I played around with this a lot in the Gerbil workspace um, to kind of get this working and kind of see how that one worked. And basically I do that same thing three times for the different limit switches. So it works pretty well. So let's go ahead and uh, show you this thing running again here.
I guess the hardest thing I had to figure out today was um, when you do status handlers for um, callbacks, the word this is not what you expect it to be. So I ended up having to add a little variable to the um, the variable that grabs out the this and stores it in the self so that when my status handler um, runs, uh, self is now the, inst the uh, instance I'm looking for. That's why there's a self right here. Other than that, this is pretty straightforward. Um, now I'm going to take John's third video on creating a widget and move this code into my widget. Thanks for watching.